All right, so we're going to try an example of relative motion in two dimensions. Remember that in one dimension, relative motion is pretty simple if we're just dealing with velocities. And things aren't accelerating, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, But now we're going to try it in 2D. And actually, it's not that bad. We do need a little bit of setup, but then it reduces to just a vector sum problem, much like the ones that we've done before. So, here's the situation. We've got a plane moving in a crosswind, and we're given the velocity of the wind relative to the Earth. And we're given in 20 meters per second, so pretty quick wind, and it's from 30 degrees north of east. Okay, so we'll need to be a little bit careful there while we're drawing this out. And then we're also given that the plane is moving relative to the air around it at 100 meters per second north. Okay, so it's moving northward at 100 meters per second relative to the air. And we want to know what the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth is. All right? And that's, that's the relevant one in many situations, right? You want to know actually what the plane's course is over the ground so that you know whether or not you're heading towards the right airport, et cetera, et cetera. And in terms of the information that we're given, well, we can get the move velocity relative to the air via a, a tool on the airplane called a pitot tube. And as far as the wind relative to the earth, well, that's information that I suppose the plane would have to be given. Uh, from ground control or from other, some other source, since it can only use its instruments um, to measure things relative to it. Okay, but those are the two things we're given for this problem. And so, if we're if we're drawing that out, uh, let's just do a quick, quick version here, where see my palm touching the screen there. Sorry for the flicker, and we've got our coordinate system north east, west, south, and with, let's get ourselves a different color for these things. So 100 meters per second north, that's one of our velocity vectors. We'll put it in like that. And we've got 20 meters per second from 30 degrees north of east. So from 30 degrees north of east, so north of east is here, I guess we go right about like that. And it's from that direction, so we'll put the arrowhead pointing towards the origin. I think that's the most intuitive way to do it. So this angle is 30 degrees. Okay? So those are the two velocities that we know. And we want to know the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth. Now, in terms of putting this into that language that we went through in the last video, what we want to do is ass assign a couple of subscripts to each one of these velocities. And it's nice that the terminology of, the of this problem sort of fits into the way that we say those already. So if we have the velocity of the wind relative to the Earth... So that's this velocity right there. Well, I'm going to call that V sub uh, A E. And the reason I'm using A E is that we've got air relative to the Earth. You can use W, I suppose, for wind as well. Anything you want, okay? But just to remind ourselves, I'm going to put over here A equals air and E equals Earth, just so we've got a note of it. And then the other thing that we know is that the plane is moving relative to the air at 100 meters per second north. So that's this one, so V plane relative to air. Remember, the relative to thing comes second in the subscripts. So we'll add that to our list. The P is the plane. Great, okay. And we already have the air one in there, so we've got all of our subscripts. So if we're looking at that equation, and we're looking at the thing that we want, which is the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth. So it's, 
its true velocity, if you will. Well, then we know from the pattern that's in that vector sum that v plane relative to the air plus v <clears throat> air relative to the earth will give us what we want. Okay, notice the pattern again. Let me grab a different color. Uh, we've got this A and this A, so the air relative to the air and air relative to the earth. If we have it in this pattern where it's sort of the, the inner, uh, so to speak, the inner subscript on both of these things, closer to the middle of the expression, well, then it kind of drops out of the equation. We're left with the first one here and the second one there, okay? Once we've got it into that pattern, okay, and once we've sort of gotten the notation things out of the way, well, then all we've got is a vector sum problem. I mean, sure, it's with velocities instead of forces or displacements or accelerations or any of the other vectors that we've considered up until this point, but it's just a vector sum. All the same mathematics applies. So what comes next is putting all this together, finding the x and y components, going through that whole process. So if you're already familiar with that, I suppose you can kind of check out at this point. But if you'd like to see it one more time, uh, I'm going to go through it on the next couple of slides. All right? So uh, here's a diagram of what we've got there. I've even put a fancy-dancy little airplane in there for us. And I've put in the arrows a little bit more to scale here. We've got the same subscripts we, as we did on the last slide. And again, we're trying to find the velocity of the plane relative to the Earth. And that's going to be the sum of that velocity and this velocity. In other words, the things that we have. It won't always work out this way. You might need to um, flip-flop the subscripts. Remember, like, reversing the order of these subscripts would insert a negative sign or something. But at least in terms of the information we've got in this problem, it fits into this template very nicely. Okay. So first we want to find the x and y components. I'll go for the x's first. Now we get into a little bit of subscript hell here because we've already got two subscripts and then suddenly we usually tack on an x or a y subscript to indicate the components. So bear with me. You're always free to rename these things if you want. Um, but I'll just put in all the subscripts. So P, A, x component. So the velocity of the plane relative to the air, x component is going to be, well, what's the, what's, what's the x component of this thing? Nothing, right? Okay, it's all in the y direction. So that's just zero. And thus the velocity of the plane relative to the air. And the y component, that's just going to be the full 100 meters per second, and it's in the positive y direction. And then we've also got... Uh, the air relative to the Earth, so this wind, this crosswind that we've got. Now that's a more complicated expression, but we've got all the information we need here. And what we'll do is we'll move this thing from where it is down here, and we'll do the head-to-tail thing, right? So we just move it sort of up there, that's about right. And then we can grab a, a different color here. And the thing that we want to find is this vector right here. Okay, so back to blue. And um, in terms of the vector here, right, if we put that in terms of the usual start at the positive x and then count up in terms of physics and math, well then this is 180 plus 30 degrees, so 210. And we're going for the x component, so it'll be cosine of 210 times the magnitude of that vector. And then in the y direction, very much the same thing, except magnitude of the vector times sine of 210. Apologies for my handwriting. It's already bad on paper, and now we're in digital form, so it doesn't get a lot better. Okay, and then we want to add these up, right? Because we're adding these vectors over here. So we want to add the x components and add the y components. In terms of the x components, if I've punched everything into my calculator correctly, we get a negative 
point three two one meters per second in the x direction, which seems to bear out if we're looking at our, at our picture over here. And then over here we have 100 uh, minus 10, as it turns out. This is, this, that whole expression turns into 10. And so we're left with a total y component of 90 meters per second, exactly. And these, respectively, are the x and y components of the thing we're trying to find. So PEX and PEY. So plane relative to the Earth, y component, plane relative to the Earth, x component, uh, respectively here and here. Okay, once we have the total x and the total y, we are nearly home free. That's going to be... Um, 90 meters per second goes up 90, say it's about that big, so that's P, E, Y. And then negative X, so we're counting over here a little ways, that's V, P, E, X. And so our vector that we're trying to find, pardon the not quite so straight line, is this one, just like I've got in the diagram, but I pulled it over here just so it doesn't get too cluttered. And we just want to go and find the magnitude and direction of this. So we can find its magnitude, as usual, by taking the x and y components of it, squaring them, summing them, and using Pythagoras to find that this is 91.7 meters per second in terms of its magnitude. And we need a direction, though, right? We're talking about a vector. So we can't stop there, and we need to um, go and find phi. Now I'll point out something here. If we maybe don't want to deal with the whole thing where, oh, if it doesn't map to an angle that's between negative 90 and 90, then your calculator will spit out a <laughs> angle for inverse tangent that's between negative 90 and 90 because... It's a multi-valued function, and yet the cal calculator's little head would explode if it tried to render more than one solution. It just gives you one solution, right? So to avoid any sort of hiccups there, what you can do, if you have a good diagram and you know what quadrant it's in, you can just deal with the internal angle, right? You can just say, oh, well, let's, let's find that phi, and then I know that that phi plus this 90 degrees here to the positive x-axis will be like what it is in physics and math terms, that angle. And the only, the only trick, quote-unquote, that you need to, to deal with there is to appropriately put in your components, okay? So this is a little bit of a deviation from the way we have been doing it, but is mathematically exactly equivalent. And here, right, uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so you put in VPX and VPY, right, opposite over adjacent. Sorry for things getting cluttered here. Um, and if you put in those two things, and here, right, we're just viewing this as like a triangle, so just put in their, their absolute values to keep it internal to that triangle, that right triangle. And if you do that, well, you get that uh, the angle between the vertical axis and the direction of the vector, so, so this thing right here, internal to that triangle, is about 10 degrees, a little more than 10 degrees, so it rounds up to 11. You add 90 to that, and you get that the, um, the angle in this whole thing, right, would be 101 degrees once you round to a few sig figs. All right, so that's the rest of the process. But remember, if you're, from, if you're comfortable with the 2D vector thing, essentially where we left off on the last slide is good enough, right? That shows you the translation process of taking a problem like this and applying it to this sort of template for relating relative velocities, and off you go. So thanks for listening, and I will talk to you again soon.